What is going on, guys? So welcome back to another episode of the Natty Roundtable. I have my guys here, Connor and James. We're going to be doing a few different topics today. We're going to be going in-depth. Hopefully, we don't take too much or go on too much of a tangent. But if we do, we'll split it up accordingly. But um, we're just going to go with the flow. So um, the first topic we are going to be talking about, guys, and I'll let them take the reins first, whoever wants to start us out. Do we take us, guys, take pre-workout? And I think I would also have you guys elaborate a little bit on why you take it, why you would or wouldn't. Um, and then also, obviously, they asked about us, but maybe a client or just the general beginner, um, someone who's kind of maybe watching this um, and they're kind of getting used to things and like, hey, pre-workout necessary? Do I need you to make gains? What's the story? So I'll let maybe Connor, you want to you take the reins first, uh, man? And, and yeah. what's your, what's your yeah. take on that? Turn on the uh, timer here. So anyway, <clears throat> do I take pre-workout? Yes. Um, I've been taking pre-workout since... I was 18, so I started doing that kind of late. Um, is it something that you need? No, you don't need it. It's just one of those things. It's, it's kind of like coffee um, is the best way I describe it to people. It's, uh, I mean, in every pre-workout you find, you're going to find caffeine. I don't know a pre-workout that doesn't have caffeine. Unless, unless you you're like talking about a of- non, like a non-stim like pumping yeah 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 style, yeah yeah one of the which we could get into ones. but but most of the yeah most of the traditional pre-workout yeah. caffeine number yeah, one yeah yeah usually they're going to be anywhere from 100 100 125 milligrams to upwards of uh sometimes you can find like a 400 but yeah, maybe like three, more 50, like 400 yeah um but the yeah it's, it's so one of those Hyde. things exactly it's one of those things you don't need it uh, it's just kind of like, like I said, like coffee to help get you going in the morning. Um, it's also one of those things I've been taking it for so long that again, just like coffee, once your body gets used to this, uh, stimulant, the supplement that you're taking, it gets used to it. And therefore you'll have to go up in the amount of caffeine that you're taking kind of like Okay, you're used to this one cup of coffee, so now you need two kind of thing. Um, does that mean you should ever reach, you know, 500 plus grams of caffeine right before you go into the gym? Probably not. Um, in fact, that'd be pretty unhealthy to just pop in that much all at once. Uh, but again, it, it's it's one of those things I tell people because people ask me about it, and uh, they ask me if it's essential. And again, I I just say no. It's not essential at all. It's just one of those extra things that you can pop in. Uh, I myself, I've tried all sorts of different companies, different flavors, all that stuff. I switch it up sometimes. Uh, All in all, you're going to get the same result. Um, Some people, and and I'll bring this up uh, because some people don't know about this. Uh, You hear about some people having different reactions to it. So besides getting amped up, right? Um, some people will feel jittery. Some people feel feel itchy is what I've heard before. Um, those are the biggest two. Um, itchy is the least, for me anyway, the least common one that I've heard. Um, that but is jittery. percent from that right Beta there. Beta alanine, I was going to say, yeah. that could yeah. be the case. Yeah, yeah, I got you the go. in here. As a there you go. <laughs> He's like, and, I popped uh, some before and, this. I feel the itches woo, right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of. Yeah. And then, uh, and uh, uh, jittery is the next one, which I myself, for example, when I first started taking pre-workout, I loved that jittery feeling. I was like, oh, man, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Um, but some people, it freaks them out. Uh, and so, you know, that is kind of a, I guess, a warning, if you want to say that, if you do start taking a pre-workout, you might feel one of those symptoms, we'll go ahead and call them. Um, but at the same time, you might not. Uh, but do anyway, back to the all-around question, do I take pre-workout? Yes, I do. Uh, do I take it for every single workout? Not necessarily. Uh, sometimes I just rather not get it in. Uh, but I do. I do take pre-workout james yep so i'll kind of jump off that and i mirror a lot of what connor said so i won't repeat all that but what i'll do is kind of break down 
some of the more popular pre-workout ingredients, just so people kind of have an understanding of why they're putting these things in their body. Um, so I already showed the beta alanine. That one, so I have it separate just because some of the pre-workout I have now doesn't have it. And you can find all these separate ingredients like super, super cheap. So you can buy a tub of one month supply for like 30 bucks, or you can buy the individual ingredients and get like four months supply for 20 bucks each and just mix it yourself. Um, quick disclaimer on that though, do not bulk mix it because different density powders will settle out. So you could grab a scoop after shaking it and have like freaking 10 grams of beta alanine and want to claw your face off uh, or 500 milligrams of caffeine. And that's just not going to be good. So you have to mix it like each time you want to take it. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um, yeah. I didn't know uh, that actually at all. Yeah. I've never so mixed like, my own free workout, but that's yeah. crazy. I would yeah, totally so, do that. I'd be like, what's going on? <laughs> Well, this that's like, you know how the, you do the scoop is always in the bottom of the tub, right? That's because the yeah. scoop is the higher density than the powder, so it's going to settle, oh, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Same thing with other powders. Um, that's why you can't do that. Um, so, yeah, beta alanine. That one's very common. It's going to give you the itchy kind of tingly. I personally love that. It's not a stimulant whatsoever, but it gives me that feeling where I'm like, all right, something's happening, and it's more of a mm. placebo for me where I'm like, all right, let's go do shit now. Um, what it does do it's a pH buffer, meaning like the lactic acid that we all talk about, you know, the pump where you just like literally can't move your arm anymore because it hurts so bad. It buffers that and prolongs that from building up. So you can do more high rep sets without feeling that as quickly. Um, the science shows that it's really only super effective if you're doing sets of 15 reps and up or workouts that are like two hours or more in length or if you're doing like high volume circuit work where you're continuously moving. But if you're doing like a regular strength-based program or like six to 10 rep ranges, it's not gonna really be super effective. But if you want that feeling, add it in or get a pre-workout with it. The other thing is just caffeine. Like that's that's really what pre-workout's about, unless you get a non-stem one, which we talked about, but like nobody really does that. Um, so yeah, like I have caffeine tablets. If I don't want to take my pre-workout, I just pop in one of those. They're 200 milligrams each. It's literally just like taking a scoop of pre-workout. Um, same thing with coffee. Just drink some coffee. If you don't want to do a pre-workout and get all the other ingredients or artificial flavors, sweeteners, if you're not into all that, it's just basic. It's going to pump you up. It's going to energize you. And creatine. Those are my big three ones that I look for in a pre-workout because creatine is like the most scientifically backed supplement. Like you, you will never find any research that goes against it at this point, or if it is, it's a very low valued study. Um, they've shown strength gains, lean mass gains, everything from it. Um, there's no longer really a need to load it like what we originally thought. You still can, because what it does is it accumulates in your muscles, and you, all you're doing by loading it is just making that accumulation happen quicker. So if you don't, you're still going to get the gains down the road. It just may not start as soon. And all creatine is, is it helps you build ATP. ATP is the energy that we use during heavy lifting. So if you have more of that, you can hopefully get like one, two, three more reps right at the end there, which you can see how that would relate to more strength and more lean muscle mass. Because if you're getting more reps, you're building more muscle if you're getting stronger. Can, um, can, I, can I add something in there? Yeah. As well, again, this this is kind of going off in a branch of this, but when it comes to that creatine, uh, kind of like pre-workout, it is one of those uh, supplements you don't necessarily need. You are going to take it in by other means. Um, a lot of people don't know, in fact, are uh, don't know that you're you're going to get creatine taking in different meats and whatnot too. You know, so America, let's face it, we're known for <laughs> how much of the different uh, meats that we eat, you're probably getting in enough creatine, but at the same time, this is going to just kind of tack onto it. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, 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 definitely. And most of these things, same with like multivitamins and all that, if you're going to take it, great. It's going to help like pop you off. But if you have a good diet, you're getting all these things anyway. That's why they are supplements. They are supplemental to what you should be doing. Um, so yeah, we talked about beta alanine, caffeine, creatine, the only other two things really that are like pretty common besides the nootropics, which I don't have much experience with, that's like the brain focused stuff, um, mm-hmm. is your pump product in general. So that's niacin, uh, glycerol, hydromax, just like, you know, the basics. All those do are niacin makes your blood vessels larger, dilates them, meaning more blood can get through. That's why your veins look wicked big. Um, and then like the glycerol, hydromax, mm-hmm. things like that 
actually like pull water into the blood vessels and keep it like so that's why that's the pump um research on the pump is kind of like wishy-washy does it help does it not help like that ah, it's cool uh so that's why people throw it in that the free workout bro yes yes <laughs> that is yeah but so if you look at like say, the bros would oh, pull yeah. that out yeah, yeah. No, I and that, I mean, that, that's a hypothesis for sure. But, but no, like, when yeah, you look no, at I the hear. hard literature, it's like, it could, so why not? Because it's not hurting you. That's the thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. I hear um, you. And, and the oh, last okay. one, the last one I'll talk about, this one's kind of, um, I didn't know about it until a year ago, but Yohimbi or Yohimbine. Mm, okay. It's, yeah. So it's an African tree bark that they have extracted. And so this one definitely has side effects. I will say that like 100%, what are if, they? You have, if you have high anxiety, uh, depression disorders, That's things like that, do not take this. It will amplify those. If you don't, you're good to go. But like, especially if you start taking more than the recommended dosage, like people have like severe anxiety attacks and panic attacks from this stuff. Um, if you are going to take it, any insulin spike will absolutely negate the fat loss. So that's what it's for. It's fat loss. It mobilizes brown fat cells or hypothetically. And there is some research that shows this. Um, however, like I said, if you have any sort of insulin spike, it's going to absolutely negate it. The, that just like stops the process entirely. So for the people that do work out uh, fasted or do cardio fasted, I would recommend taking this. Again, though, you have to watch the dosing. Uh, definitely don't like double dose this because the anxiety issues. Um, yeah. And you, ha you will find it in some free workouts and people don't realize the, like the fasted nature of it. So like, yeah, the ingredients in there, but you're not getting the effect of it. So you just have to be careful with that one. But yeah, that's, that's kind of the main ones that I look for. Like Connor, I take it occasionally. I have a, a tub with me at all times in my gym bag, but I normally use it just for the caffeine. Um, that's, you know, if I need to pick me up, I mean, I always take my creatine just because I want to keep that loaded just, you know, to be safe. But other than that, if needed for an energy boost. For sure. No, I think I think I can totally agree with both of you guys 100 percent. And just to kind of piggyback and not really go over everything you guys already mentioned. One thing I wanted to talk about with the caffeine, a lot of people do have those sort of effects because caffeine whether that's a pre-workout from an actual like supplement company and it's a pre-workout or you're just having caffeine from whatever source, coffee itself, or um, you're making your own pre-workout. There is um, L-theanine, which is a lot of times in pre-workouts as well, which helps get rid of that like jittery feeling you get from caffeine. Um, so if you'll notice most pre-workouts, especially more of the cutting edge ones that are going to have um, no proprietary blends, which I'll talk about in a second as well. Um, that is going to usually have that in there because it will diminish those, the kind of the negative effects that caffeine brings you, especially as a new user of caffeine. Um, and I think we can all attest when you first took pre-workout, you're just like, holy crap, this is amazing. But after, like Connor mentioned, your tolerance is going to go down just like any drug because in the nature of it, caffeine is a drug for sure. Um, all the other things you're doing within that um, will develop a tolerance as well. So that's where kind of cycling off of it if you are something like, hey, I take pre-workout every day and I've taken for the last six years and now I take five scoops every time. It's like if you took a month off, you'd probably develop a little bit better um, effects from taking it so much. But one of the things I did want to mention, because Connor kind of talked about it, and there's actually a really good video. Um, I believe it's an Omar Esau video with Eric Helms in it. And Eric Helms is talking about, if you're not familiar with Eric Helms, he's from 3D Muscle Journey. Um, very, very smart guy. But he talks about how, and it's crazy, I believe it's, I'm gonna, I might get the number wrong, but it's around 600 to like 800 milligrams of caffeine um, is like the actual peak performance in terms of strength. So what he's saying is, obviously, logically, he's not one guy who's like, oh, we take that every day. But what he's saying is for maybe like a power lifter or someone who is doing something on one single day, that could be beneficial. And the other thing he mentions in that video is for people like me, the caffeine addicts out there who don't have that euphoric effect from caffeine or um, feel like they've developed that tolerance, you still will get some of the benefits um, at, the, at the muscular level from caffeine when it comes to the performance side of things. And obviously you're not getting that like, yeah, I'm ready to go, but you do get that um, kind of knock off that, that tired feeling, which gets you back to the, that baseline level, which is also kind of why you should probably wean off of it a little bit, at least for a week or so. I like to take a week off because that's about all I can do. I'll take a week off of all pre-workout and I'll just have like a cup of coffee in the morning 
and then I'll be good to go from there. But um, yeah, and I mean, really in terms of other things, I think I, I wanted to really just mention that it is a luxury. Um, a lot of times I really try to stress the fact that people who are like, hey, I don't have a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm going to be like, this is not what you need to be doing with your money. Maybe going and buying some coffee. Sure, do that. But let's not go buy the $40 pre-workout for 30 servings. So um, that's where, like, I really stress that it is a luxury. Um, it isn't something that you need. It's not going to make or break your success when it comes to losing fat, building muscle. It will help. But like I said, it is a luxury with things. So um, the other thing I wanted to mention um, is just overall, like you, you kind of mentioned the pump products as well. There's certain things out there um, with kind of not that intensity side of side effects that a lot of people don't like with pre-workouts. Um, Cause if you're not a heavy caffeine user, 350 milligrams will be a detriment to you and could mess up your stomach, could make you feel like shit overall. Um, I know I used to throw up from pre-workout because I wouldn't eat anything before it. And I would have workouts in the morning when I was first getting into lifting at like 5.30 in the morning. First lift was always great. First, I hit my main lift. I did some Olympic lifts and I'd kill it. And then I'd hit some whatever whatever else I do. In the middle of the workout, I just feel horrible. So you got to really kind of take it for what it is. You got to find what works, what doesn't. But be reasonable and don't spend your money on it if you don't have the money. Um, and realize that it's not the end all be all with things. But yeah, no, I think that really covers everything with that. I think that's some good insight on pre workout in general, guys. So, um, kind of moving on, I, we can, like, I know this is something where um, we want to kind of go with the flow. So, we'll, we'll either cut this or keep it going, Connor, either way. And, and, um, and I want to say one thing. Um, yeah. I'm, it, said, it keeps popping up that I have poor connection on my end. Joe, I'm the same way, I like moving around when I talk. But try, try not, not to make it as fast as movements because yeah, uh, I, 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 I don't I don't know if that's gonna on my end when I, when this records I don't know if it's gonna uh, be as patchy like that or if it's gonna be a conglomeration or what's gonna happen there. Okay, so, well, yeah. we'll see. I mean, it won't All be too right. bad. Um, All but right. yeah, so kind of moving on, guys, to the next topic. The next question we have is how to lose the last little bit layer, last layer of fat. So I guess they're kind of asking. I would assume they're already in a dieting phase. They're already kind of working towards um, reducing body fat overall. I'm assuming they're in a deficit. How do they kind of keep that going? What's the process of losing that last little bit that they're like, hey, why are my abs popping the way I want them to be? How do they, how do they go about that? Let's start with James this time. Um, well, I think a lot of it is people underestimate how lean you have to be to look the way some people look. Um, and each person holds body fat completely differently. I'll use myself as an example. Um, so I stepped on stage, my scale said I was 6% body fat. And we know that those aren't super, super accurate. I'll say I lost according to that scale, six to 7% during my contest prep where I thought I was going to have abs. No, they weren't there. But that's where <laughs> I hold my body fat, lower abs. It took me until those last probably four to five weeks before they really started to come in. And that's pretty damn lean, leaner than most people want to get for health reasons. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of it is genetics as to where you hold your body fat. Some people have abs at like 15% body fat. And I'm just like, well, sweet, good for you. Uh, that's not me. Um, as to how to lose the last body fat, in my opinion, you just got to keep going. Um, if you're plateauing in body fat, you, your body wants to hold on to fat. It's trying to keep itself alive. And by losing its body fat, you're losing your protection. So you have to do things that your body doesn't want to do, meaning Decrease your calories even more. And if you can't do that, increase your cardio more. If you can't do that, I mean, those are your two big drivers. Um, what you'll find is the leaner you get, the less active you get, you become more sedentary unconsciously. It's not like you're like, oh, I just go to sit on my couch. Like you just stop doing the little things. Uh, and that's neat. Uh, nervous energy, uh, whatever it is. Nervous. Non-exercise non activity thermogenesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. what it is. That's fun to say. People are like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you move throughout the day, when you're not actually working out, they're like, oh. yeah, like, you know, tapping your foot, all the little hand movements, things like or that. Like you're a construction worker compared to like a sedentary, you know, like, yeah, I'm not feeling yeah. that. But even like on a person, like a case by case basis, like you, as you get leaner and leaner will become less active with those small things so because nice. your body's trying to save calories. Um, so that's going to slow. So you're like, oh, I've been eating the same calories. I've been losing weight. Now I stopped losing weight because your body's like, all right, enough. I'm going to cut out these things. Oh, that's, you can say cut out we these things a, that I have to talk about. Oh, just like the, the, the general lifestyle things that you were like subconsciously doing, you'll start slowing down on that. It's, 
it's almost like a it's almost like a um your body's defense mechanism evolutionary to say hey you're giving me less calories i need to maintain as much as i can i'm going to preserve the amount of energy i basically need and you and you kind of it's fighting back against you without you even realizing but um no i think that was perfect i think that really kind of describes exactly the definition i give people i i give it a little bit more blunt i'm like you got to keep dieting like you know what i mean yeah. they're like oh great and you know what i mean but i'm like there is ways obviously we can go about it um usually i like to especially start people out. Um, I think with a lot of my clients who are more general population, maybe they're not even doing weight training. You know what I mean? Where they're not even on some sort of a plan with the stimulating muscle growth, helping their metabolism stay at the level it's at or increase it for that matter. So that will help a lot of people sometimes um, because who knows where they're at. If they're like, oh, I'm just doing cardio all the time and watching my diet, they could be benefiting there too. But yeah, keeping in mind or I guess assuming that they are already doing a weight training plan, they're already doing cardio like James said, keep that tool in your toolbox. Don't add in cardio too much, but know yourself as a person where it's like, hey, should I cut calories? Is that going to be a little bit easier for me? Or is it going to be a little bit easier for me to add a little bit more cardio in? So um, I think that you hit the nail on the head as far as you just got to keep going. And it also, like people have to have a realistic, I think this, we're having a good coach who's like, hey, are you doing a show? Are you just doing this for fun? Like, where do we want to end this? Because we can go as hard as we want, but if there's no end goal, just getting lean just to get lean is not fun, especially at the level a natural competitor is going to get. That's just miserable, like you said, especially for a female or um, even a male, getting to those low levels of body fat, are, are, are they're brutal on your body at a certain point, especially if you're at the level that you're probably going to be at when you're, when you're competing um, at, like a, at a world stage or something like that. Like Those guys are peeled. So it's like they're doing it for a reason, of course, and they love it. So don't just do it just to do it. Um, but yeah, also be, be real with yourself. Hey, do I hold more body fat in my abs? Do I hold it like in the spots that I'm trying to lose? Maybe that's why I need to just continue going if that's really the result I want. But, um, but yeah, no, I think, I think that really is it for me, Connor. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> kind of again, piggybacking on what we said about everybody holds fat in different areas of their body. Um, you know, most of the time, you know, uh, when people talk about that, they're going to think uh, the stomach because people typically when they gain weight, they're going to get that little pot belly, everything like that. Um, but for myself, for example, uh, I hold it in my uh, in my arms. Uh, it's not until I start getting closer to stage do my arms kind of start getting more striation or even if my shoulders get more striations, anything like that. Um, whereas my calves, for example, once I start cutting for a show, a month into this cut, they're like stage ready. I'm good to go there. Uh, and, and so everybody is different when it comes to that. So this person, usually I would say that most of the time when people are talking about cutting this last little bit of fat, they're probably talking about their stomach. Um, cause I think, I feel that's what people are looking at the most and when they're talking about weight loss, fat loss, um, because that's the most distinguishable typically. Um, other than that, uh, if you do have an understanding of how to, uh, of how deficits work and how surpluses work when it comes to calories, uh, obviously tracking them is the easiest thing that you can do. If you understand how it works, track it. Um, one thing that I've always used, whether I'm in prep outside, uh, is I will use my fitness pal. Uh, the numbers on there, I, I started playing around with them once. I, I don't I don't know what it counts. I think it counts sugar as a macronutrient. I'm not really sure. Um, I played with the numbers and they're slightly off from just taking carbs, uh, fats and proteins as macros uh, when it comes to the overall calories. So I don't know what else it takes in there. Um, but that's going to be honestly one of your best friends because they do have that full database of the foods that millions of, I mean, there are millions of entries from hundreds, thousands, millions of people that have put stuff in there and you're probably going to find what you need. Yeah. Uh, and, people are and so, so shocked so, by that. They're like, Whoa. yeah. Yeah, like, and then if you can't find it, it yeah, use another it, substitute, the closest thing. Yeah, and, and if you can't find it, if you don't do that, you can make your own thing. Yep. So, for example, uh, I made one specifically 
for the protein shake that I make. I didn't share it on the database. Yeah. Yeah. Because you had the option to share it with everybody else. I didn't share it with anybody else because I literally just named it protein shake. I know what's in that. Nobody else is going to know what's in that. He just wants to keep the secrets to the game. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. why. Yeah. Sure. All right. Don't and, share uh, it. It's all right. We'll, we'll keep that and, in mind. Uh, and, uh, but, but yes, I'd say if you understand, even if you have a slight understanding of how to go into a calorie deficit or surplus or maintain anything like that, then that's going to be a very good tool for you to use as well. Um, before I started using that, I used to write everything down, which is yeah. a pain. But it's, uh, but it's good, though. It's accountability. That's huge. It is. It is. It is. Um, but I will say writing everything down on a piece of notebook paper, uh, which I filled out like a whole notebook once, and it's, it's just messy and it's hard to read, especially when you got bad handwriting like me. Um, so I'd, I, I would recommend, if, again, if you understand how to do something like that, check out my fitness pal. It's going to be one of the easiest things that you can do and you, you can get it on your phone too. Uh, but yes, uh, again, everybody stores fat, uh, in different places when it comes to the amount that they store fat. So if you, whoever asked that question, whoever wonders that question, if you're looking at a certain area of your body, and you're like, oh, well, this is the last little bit. That's probably where you're storing the most amount of fat. <clears throat> yeah. And just one last thing, kind of jumping off that, Connor, mm -hmm. being honest with yourself about how accurately you are tracking things. Because like tracking things and tracking things inaccurately are not going to mm -hmm. help you. Yes. Um, I mean, they're, they're a good start. But like I've had clients, it's like, yeah, so I don't have a food scale, but I'm assuming this is five ounces of chicken. It's like, well, yeah. you know what? Like that half ounce added up over time adds up that small little like Hershey's kiss you eat every day that adds up like every yeah. little thing. So if you're slow, like you're like your body fat has slowed down, be real with yourself and really take like a critical eye of like, how accurate am I truly being? Yep. And like, am I tracking everything? I think that's interesting. Cause with, with you guys, I think a lot of your guys, uh, clients are obviously competitors or at least in that mindset of a competitor. And it's interesting because I actually have, I would say 90, 80, 90% 90 of the transformations I have are through guesstimation of my fitness belt calories. But the mm. first thing I say when people are struggling is I say, hey, how good are we really guesstimating at this point? Some people are really good at it. Some people mm. aren't. And that's where I say at this point, the next best thing, if we're not seeing results, we need to get more accurate. You know what I mean? And yeah. that it could even just be more accurate with guesstimation or at least some people aren't even doing it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's where, like I said, with writing it down, that even maybe, since you're not actually tallying up the totals, but just you actually writing down, oh, I just had a sleeve of Oreos. Like, maybe, you know, like, that. it just keeps you on point, and having to do the app, I think, is huge. But, no, that's always my first thing, where it's like, hey, we are guesstimating right now. I get that's easier, but do you want this really to happen? Because then we can really start weighing things out. Or what my big suggestion is, weigh the things out that are going to be the – uh, what would be the word to say the the troublesome food so like a peanut mm. butter avocados nuts you know what i mean things where you're just like oh it's just a handful like yeah just a handful and you're you know what i mean 10 grams of fat over for your day so it's yeah. like that's where i think that that is interesting but that's where i think also the mindset just based on hey like what is your goal really you know what i mean where you don't need to track if you're not super like con like concerned about getting shredded glutes you know like that's for me like my my legs and my and my butt is is where i hold a lot of my fat so it'd be like i'm gonna be dieting to to no end until until those pop out so yeah. but like i said for most people that's not a that's not a goal of theirs unless you're a competitor so so uh you're yeah. you're weird and, like us and, and you like it so <laughs> and, and if if you do want to help track yourself be more accurate with it you can always go out and buy food scales and there mm -hmm. you can find some i think i think mine is a hamilton beach and it's like 20 oh, bucks from yeah, walmart very so it, you don't have to buy the crazy fancy ones i know somebody uh one of my guys actually he i don't know how much it cost him he went out and bought one that measures like milliliters and grams and ounces and all the stuff um he's measuring everything He's measuring everything. Um, in fact, some people go as uh, in depth as to count their the condiments 
that they take in. Oh yeah. Um, well, I mean, so, I get, when you get to down to that low level, I get I get it. But like mm. for the normal human, they're just like, oh yeah, you're you're I, not gonna do like, it. And, and, I have to and, do what? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I'd say if if you're just general population, even if you are an athlete, you, sh- I really wouldn't worry as much about the condiment that you or know. Or just cut them all no. together. Like if you really no, need yeah. Yeah. that much, get them all in farms. Like man, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a big difference because I like that's one of my first things when I tell like my general population like here's what we're gonna do we're not gonna drink our calories we're gonna drink water and coffee um, and we're gonna do dry spices instead of condiments because if you look at like so, I mean some of them are fine but if you look Calorie. at like, ranch yeah. barbecue sauce even ketchup people, dude it's all sugar yeah people douse like ranch ketchup I mean it's just sugar. like fat and yeah barbecue sauce is just trust me i add all that stuff in when i'm trying to add in calories it's the opposite yeah yeah yeah. like exactly it's like you gotta cut the stuff that you put in when you're trying to add weight you know it's like the the easy big dense stuff i I don't recall how much it is that you can take in uh you can find a video of it on youtube uh to get to a hundred grams of calories for mustard is like a crazy amount. Mustard is like the best thing that you could put mustard if you are sincerely yeah. tracking yeah. your macros and you want to go that far when it comes to condiments. Like mustard is the thing to put on stuff. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't like it, but hey, if you want yeah, something like, so on there. I think it's Jack Thorburn, one of the UK guys. He has his combo of sriracha and mustard and he puts it together on everything. Ooh. So there's like no calories in hot sauce, no calories in mustard. Yeah. And he swears by it. Uh, I don't know if I do it, but... I do use mustard. Maybe on some like things. I don't know if you could talk me into a lot. Maybe like some chicken, some plain chicken, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would but, get a little tiring, though. Yeah. <laughs> but um. anyways, all right, last question, guys. Last question here. So how to maintain your physique on vacation? And I'll also segue that to what do you do on vacation in general? Like what what changes? Um, obviously, it differs based on where you're going on vacation. Um, but I'll, I'll start this one out. Um, when I go on vacation and when I tell my clients, I'll kind of take it from both sides. Clients, honestly, I, I really let them get to a point where they enjoy what they're doing on vacation because, quite frankly, you're spending a ton of money on vacation and you should freaking enjoy it and not be like, oh, you got to be, all right, we're going to prep here, blah, blah, blah. Like, but that is also considering someone being, like I said, a general population. Um, they're really not concerned. They don't have a show. Maybe they're prepping for different circumstances. With, with that in mind also, I don't say just go out the window with things. Um, enjoy yourself, but you can really end things with a goal of just maintaining the weight that you went in there with um, or kind of at least the progress you had went in there with, not trying to expect the world, but also trying to at least maintain, like I said. Um, and if there is opportunity where you have a hotel gym or you have access to if you're on a beach or somewhere nice, um, getting something is always better than nothing is my big thing there. So being able to go hop on the, the cardio equipment for a little bit, get a little quick workout in, um, having a nice coach that's going to give you some, Hey, here's your quick workout for the equipment you have. That's always nice to do too. Um, but I think the big thing, like I said, is also not stressing yourself about it because then you're not going to enjoy your, your vacation. But at the end of the day, one week in the scheme of things or however long the vacation is, um, is not going to be detriment, make or break your success here or there. So that is the big thing there, um, especially for other people. Myself, I am like a, I love working out. So that's that's the thing I, I figure out the most. I'm like, oh, they got a hotel gym. Oh, I can go do that. So like I'm I'm doing those things already because I enjoy it, and it makes the vacation more enjoyable for me. But at the same time, don't feel like that needs to be the thing you're doing because, as I just mentioned, one week of of maybe being a little bit off kilter. Um, but still being mindful and intuitive is not going to be the end of the world. So um, I don't know, Connor, you want to take over? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Same thing. It's it's vacation. Honestly, in my mind, it's you're going. A vacation is a time that people take to go out and have fun. So go out and have fun. You know, um, you don't have to be down to a point on every single thing. Um, and, and again, kind of piggybacking off what you said. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're probably going to gain some weight, but the, but the thing is, people also don't understand just how quickly you're going to lose that weight. Um, Getting right back on track. Yeah, yep. yeah, because uh, realistically, a lot of that stuff that you're taking, let's say you've been dieting, you've been really good about it, uh, but then now you had a week vacation and you gain five pounds, something like that. That five pounds is going to come off fast. Um, that five pounds, the majority of it, 
uh, a good amount of it, if you've been eating extra food, is just going to be food that's inside you at that yep. point, right? And then yep. once you start uh, dieting again, you're, you know, I mean, you're going to excrete that food that's in you, and it's being replaced by a smaller amount. So a lot of that is just simply what's stored in your body, right? Um, so that's that's also why, besides uh, losing water weight. When you first start a diet, that first three to five pounds is usually really fast um, because it's just replacing this amount of food with this amount of food instead. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that. Um, so, again, don't freak out about it. Um, I've had clients before who would get kind of like that same thing. They've gotten five pounds and I'm just like, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You're going to be fine. In a couple of days, it's going to be gone. And then in a couple of days, it's gone. Um, the good thing about vacation, typically, uh, when you go out on vacation, you're doing sightseeing, you're doing going to amusement parks, you're doing something to where you are usually on your feet constantly throughout the day. Um, so you are, if if you don't have that exercise, if you don't have that gym in your hotel, or if you don't have any planned you are usually going to be still, you know, burning calories in some way or another because you are being active. Um, again, more specifically, if you are doing that sightseeing, anything like that. So, for example, uh, during the summer, I had a show, and and uh, I, I'm, I'm correct when I say Iowa is where the Great Mall of America is, correct? Minnesota. Minnesota, okay. Yep. Minnesota, thank you. You're close. Um, close, yeah. Um, we went there, you know, and I did. I mean, honestly, this was directly after my show too. So I was, so I was eating food anyway. I mean, why not celebrate? But I was still getting in that extra bit of work, you know, because we're walking around the mall Which of America. Which helps the cause. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So wise, you're probably your body was like, whoa. So it probably helped that too, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so I mean, after uh, ten minute walks. Yeah. So, so on my end. All in all, vacation. I'd I'd still say you know it's a vacation. Go ahead and kind of kind of do your own thing. Uh, as Joe said, you know don't go overboard with everything um, because there are times where you know if you just went overboard, you could gain upwards of. Uh, I've seen this happen with people who get done with shows in a week. Oh, yeah. They'll gain fifteen pounds. You know <laughs> something like that. Again, they could lose it relatively quick. But that'll um, have a little bit more lasting effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, when, when you're not knowledgeable of knowing that, okay, I can lose this pretty quick, you're going to freak out. You're going to be like, oh, my God, I'm so off track now and everything. <laughs> but realistically, once you start getting back into the role of everything, you're going to be you're gonna be pretty good. You're going to be pretty good. So I think that's mainly what I have to say. Um, if you are, again, if you are very serious about it, then yeah, you can track stuff. Uh, but, but yeah, all, all in all, uh, basic for me is it's a vacation. Have some fun with it. Yeah. So I'll go into a little bit more of my like detailed guidelines just so like, cause you guys cover the generality of it, like the psychology behind it a little bit, like don't beat yourself up, all that. Um, what I tell people, well, first off, if you're a competitor and you're under 12 weeks, I would hope that you're not going on a vacation. And if you are traveling, <laughs> Be smart about it. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, what I do is I give just basic guidelines where I want you to get four high quality uh, protein feedings a day. And, you know, that's pretty easy to do. You've got breakfast, lunch, dinner. Be smart about what you're eating. Like get some good meat in you. Um, that sounds funny. Um, and then, <laughs> sorry, I had to. Um, <laughs> okay. I was thinking it. Uh, yeah. Um, and then I always like, you know, if you have protein bars, if you have shakes, like, Take, you know, take enough with you to cover one each day because that's your fourth feeding right there. And that's super easy to do. Even if you are walking around, moving around, just throw a protein bar in your backpack, in your purse, in your pocket, whatever. Or, you know. Oh, come on, James. I know you're there. Drink that. <laughs> Wait, say that what? again, James. Say that one more time. Uh, pro protein bar in your bag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like, just, you know, plan ahead and travel with some sort of high quality Oh, oh no, we'll never know. <laughs> We're never going to know the information. <laughs> Uh-oh. A high-quality protein bar in your bag protein. so that you can right, just eat it. Back. 
Am now I back? back? Yeah, okay. you better talk slower, right dude. I know. <laughs> so, I will talk slower. Um, you're getting three quality protein feedings for meals, hopefully. And then your fourth one's going to come from a protein bar or a protein shake. Something, something quick and easy. There we go. Yeah. That's what he was getting at, folks. Okay. Yes. And then, so on top of that, when you're eating your protein, Ours. <laughs> ratios, protein, you're good, you're protein good, you're to good. carbs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is awful. Um, this yeah, is so funny. just be, this is funny. be mindful of the serving sizes, right? So your protein, your carb, you want to kind of match those equally. Um, and then if you are going to drink, which most people do on vacation, what I advise is if you're like, all right, I'm going out to the bar tonight, take out carbs from at least one meal, maybe, and like minimize it in a second meal because you need to take out calories somewhere and carbs are normally the easiest to do. So, you know, you may be a little bit less full, but at least you're kind of like balancing things somewhat. It's not going to be perfect, but on vacation, we're not going to be perfect. So that's kind of what, that's my general guidelines. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Yeah, no, I think that covers it a lot, guys. But um, I think there's a lot of sweet content in this, a lot of informative content, a lot of things people can take away. Um, so I want to thank you guys um, for, for taking time to do this. And thank you guys for watching, if you're still watching, especially. But um, yeah, stay tuned for more, guys. Either this is going to be all full one episode or break, broken apart. Either way, thank you once again. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything you'd like to see us talk about, please leave them below or just any comments um, or about anything we spoke about in this episode. So thank you guys once again. Um, for, for Connor, for James, and me, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.